so the regional director, but uh, in particular the emergency program uh, with the director, uh, Salam Gaye, and the whole team. Uh, we were really a whole team to, to uh, deliver uh, that work. Um, I'm going to talk about West Africa, but I think this is transferable to other regions, um, at least in African uh, continent. Um, so to, uh, am I on, on, I guess on, on, on control of these slides, eh? Um, and I don't, yeah. So 2021 has been really a, an unprecedented year for West Africa. Um, Nigeria has called it its worst cholera a year for a decade, really. Um, so it started in December 2020. Uh, as you see, DRC is usually having cases in Ethiopia and Mozambique, but basically Nigeria um, started in December and led to this in, in West Africa. I put Cameroon in West Africa. I'm sorry for Cameroon people, <laughs> but I think it, it was linked with the West Africa outbreak. But of course, Niger, Benin, Burkina Faso, Mali, Togo, uh, was part of the issue. Burundi also later on, and Uganda. This is 2021, uh, by the way. So it, 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 it's, um, I'll, I'll speak a little later about 2022. Unpreceded year, we had five times more cases than the preceding year, and three times more death in the region than the 2020 uh, year. So that means that 129,000 cases uh, for uh, the whole Africa, but um, for West Africa, it was 114 cases, uh, 114,000 cases uh, with 4,000 deaths. These are unvalidated data. We'll get the validated data later on, but uh, please uh, be aware of that. It's good I have the timer here, so. <laughs> Um, but I, I don't think it's the right time, though, 22 minutes here. Uh, okay, uh, driver, uh, I'm coming back, sorry. Uh, as you see, the driving country really were uh, Nigeria, Niger, Benin, Cameroon. Cameroon doesn't have so much cases, but it's, it's going on in 2022. And uh, they, there's really a major issue in Cameroon, DRC and Mozambique. So these are our drivers for uh, last year. Now, if we look at 2022, as we are speaking now on the 31st of March, we still have outbreak in Benin, Cameroon, DRC, Malawi, Mozambique, and Tanzania. So we have basically a B, I don't know if I, it's not B model, but B geographic. You know, we have West Africa, which started much in May, June, July, with a peak in September, October. But then with uh, the, the, the storms, uh, in January, then uh, the country in the southern east part uh, start over. And that's what we're seeing right now with uh, Malawi, uh, Mozambique, Tanzania, etc. cetera. Uh, so, uh, so what happened in uh, August, we started discussing how we should scale up really the response um, in Afro, in the regional office. Um, so to address really that r rising cases, and of course it took time, we started discussing in August, but uh, the decision was taken on the 5th of October. So uh, we decided to what uh, we call in the emergency response framework, a multi-country IMS response structure, uh, what people call the cholera hub in Lomé. This is the short term that uh, everybody use and we, we I, I, even though I, I kept on saying multi-country response, uh, people would say the cholera hub. So it's a it's a it's a structure that we put in place in low May. Uh, it could have been in the, our usual hub is in Dakar. In uh, the, the but the the issue was really at that time that Dakar didn't have enough uh, places for us. And we thought Lomi was a good place because transport is easy, you know. Askai, which is the Pan-African airline, really uh, home is in Lomi. So it is their easy flight to all West African uh, countries. So it was an IMS structure um, that was under the um, regional director for emergency. The structure is in blue, you see it with a IM incident manager, but with four pillars. One was about uh, what we call hot 
pillars of health operation and technical expertise, which was uh, lead, led, led by uh, Vincent Soginou, which you know very well. Uh, there was a preparedness readiness uh, pillar. There was a OSL uh, pillar and there was an administrative pillar. We were in December uh, with the Omicron uh, coming up, we were 19 people. So 19 people in Tele working uh, for the whole Christmas period. That was quite a, an issue, but anyway, we were there. And under that, we had the scope of the uh, multi-country response of, of the cholera hub in Lomé was, not, we had 16 countries uh, that were identified within the scope. Uh, at that time, there was two countries in outbreak, Niger, Nigeria, but 14 other countries that were uh, identified uh, as at, at risk uh, cholera uh, country for which we were asking to uh, support uh, preparedness and uh, readiness. Uh, since then, um, when we arrived on the 5th of October, there was three other countries with outbreaks. So Niger, Nigeria, which has already uh, said, but then Benin uh, was part of that. Uh, there was also uh, Cameroon and Togo uh, that uh, came in outbreak. And, and this was for the West Central Africa, but there was also East and Southern Africa, uh, which we were supporting through the hub in Nairobi. Uh, so uh, 2021 was Uganda and uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, the next two slides are really uh, uh, full of text. Don't worry, and I'll probably read it, but this is the achievement that we did. Um, I'm sorry for the, the, well, it's not so bad, you can read it. So basically we supported five, five countries. Wait, 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 wait. It's not showing anymore here. So five countries in outbreak, you have them there. I just already named them, uh, putting on and supporting them with a national response plan and an IMS structure and our IM, an incident manager, some nationally, some international incident manager, and six additional countries. Um, just to tell you, the hub went initially was supposed to end on 31st of December, but we extended it till the 31st of March. So six other countries which were supported for outbreak until the 31st of March. Uh, we had reactive vaccination in Cameroon, Niger, Nigeria, and on the 31st of March, preparing for Mala Malawi uh, reactive vaccination. Uh, we provided technical support for preparedness and respond uh, through the deployment of 103 experts, the exact number, in 11 countries. Uh, we donated cholera kits and, and logistics to eight countries in outbreak and at risk. Um, and uh, we supported seven countries to complete their hotspot mapping. Uh, using the GTFCC. This is something I learned is uh, a lot of countries had their odds, but, but not necessarily under the principle of the GTFCC. So we sort of, um, and, and that you know all, but we're, we're sort of working really to have that updated. Um, supported four cross-border collaboration meetings in West Africa and some meeting also with WOW and UNICEF and uh, we conducted a country readiness checklist assessment in 22 countries. Uh, we mobilized uh, $10 million USD uh, for preparedness response during that, that period of which 3.7 million went to countries. Uh, um, I would say between 400 and $800,000 for the country in outbreak and around $200,000 for each country which were uh, doing, uh, uh, which were identified as at risk for preparedness activity. Uh, and more recently, we mobilized another 300 million uh, $300,000, so uh, $0.3 million for conducting and uh, six regional readiness workshop um, with partners. I'll, I'll go on with uh, the partners a little later, but we already did the Lomi workshop, uh, which was a real success. I don't know if you're following us on Twitter, but uh, lots of pictures that we uh, uh, share. It was really meant to be a hand-on uh, workshop, so it was a four days, two days more around the manual, the GTFCC field manual, but really two days which were hand-on. On the last day, they had to build a, a CTC and a, 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 a cholera treatment unit 
So we had four countries and the materials and we had the field and they did it. So um, it was quite interesting. They had to test water, you know, with regard to bacteriological tests on water. And uh, we had UNICEF, UNICEF with us. So we're planning to do, the next one in, is in uh, Niger, then DRC, then uh, Kenya, uh, Nigeria, and um, Dar el Salaam, so in Tanzania. Uh, happily supported by the partner platform um, from HQ. Uh, we also secure, and this is also a point I want to elaborate, but uh, we are working now in response with uh, regional pre-positioning of uh, material. Uh, we feel that it, it takes a lot of time before we can send material to uh, countries. Uh, we developed that a lot with COVID-19. Um, so. Uh, uh, what we think really is a country that uh, alert us or declare an outbreak and they need quick support within 24, 48 hours. So we usually we try to get them funding right away and it push equipment. So we don't wait necessarily, but it's the minimal equipment. So we don't necessarily wait for them to tell us what is the stocks in your country and so on. So we push minimum and that has caused quite a, a, a good uh, mobilization of WHO and partners. Uh, WHO is the um, lead eh, for uh, partners, uh, health partners. So if they can be in the field very quickly and they can mobilize partners, then it's much easier to get the buy-in from partners. So uh, for COVID, and I, I tried to push that for cholera also, um, the CFE gives 50,000, eh? immediately 50,000. For COVID, we give between 150,000 to 400,000 400, uh, to countries to really uh, start. Uh, it was during the wave, of course, uh, uh, COVID, we were working with uh, waves and not uh, the, the beginning of the outbreak was quite a while ago. And uh, uh, we would push a, a concentrator so that they can quickly be in the field and mobilize the partners. Uh, so we we secure um, three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars of stocks at Accra. This is our uh, regional stock, uh, and we develop a strategy. It's Wash also kit, by the way, a cholera and Wash kit, and we developed that strategy with HQ. We discussed about that a few weeks ago, but the idea, and that will publicize a lot with country. The idea is to send for about 100 patients, that's it. And then the country will have to mobilize their, 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 their stock themselves. So, and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, so we're keeping uh, the capacity for 12 outbreak for a year, that's how we planned it, um, uh, with uh, 24 kits uh, for investigation kits. So, so this is not much, but it's at least in a strategy where we give right away a little bit of help to country so they can be in the field uh, quickly. Uh, so what else we did? Of course, we did training. We did the uh, prevention of sexual exploitation and abuse trainings uh, with all our uh, experts, the 103 experts in the field. It was mandatory. Um, mandatory. Um, that was a specific training uh, on top of the other WHO mandatory training. Uh, we conducted two uh, trainings also on preparedness response, uh, virtual online trainings, uh, developed also training material in French and English and did quite a few publications in surveillance. I'm not talking much about surveillance, I'm sorry, but uh, that was a really a uh, hub for the response. Um, just to come back a little bit, a uh, regional framework, as you know, um, which really take the GTFCC strategy of 2017. So the regional framework was adopted on 2018 uh, with target. I put the target, um, what I call so de puce, and uh, as you see, uh, 2021 is not looking very good. We have had more cases than in 2018. Uh, the CFE is higher, and we still have a, quite a fair number of deaths, yet less country involved from 15 to 11. So, so we're still far from uh, the, our three target of uh, our regional framework. Targets are a little different from the GTFCC, just to uh, remind them to you. Uh, it's to reduce by 100% the number of countries experiencing cholera outbreaks by 2030. 
uh, reduce the number of cases to less than 50% of the current level by 2022. Uh, that would mean less than 60,000 cases for Afro um, this year and reduce the case fatality rate for cholera for less than 1% by 2022 again. Uh, that would mean less than 60 deaths. We had 4,000 this year. Um, what else I can say? Um, okay, success. Um, of course, uh, the establishment, I think those multi-country response uh, structure is are really a success. We were the first one at Afro, at least that I know, but we were the first one. They did one for yellow fever, and now they're doing one for the humanitarian uh, crisis of, of the Sahel region. Um, of course, there's uh, challenges um, uh, for cholera, recurring outbreaks, and concomitant uh, humanitarian crisis with limited uh, number of resources in country. Uh, we had to manage a critical shortage, a global shortage of uh, material, as you know, um, and uh, in sufficient ship, uh, ownership by member states, uh, it's, it's still a challenge for cholera. Now, I try to get some challenge with regard to surveillance. Um, one of the challenges there is delayed outbreak declaration and cross-border collaboration. We see now between Malawi and uh, Mozambique, uh, we have a region in Malawi where the, the cases, uh, the initial quite a fair number of cases were all coming from Mozambique. And uh, yes, um, of course, uh, the problem of the, the fragmented surveillance systems uh, with multiple S here uh, is a, an issue. Uh, Af Afro, we have the IDSR. Uh, we have the weekly epidemiological report, record, I, I want to say, this cholera specific surveillance and environmental uh, surveillance is also uh, not all put together. Um, lab is an issue, I think it's also, uh, I think, uh, very limited. And uh, monitoring and evaluation of uh, our um, intervention, uh, mapping of the hotspot, uh, where are we in terms of elimination plans uh, and so on? I think this is uh, critical if we want to mobilize uh, our stakeholder member states and, and so on. We have to have good data uh, to bring in the awareness. Uh, okay, so I think that comes from you. Guys, just to talk about the uh, next step. Uh, I, I, uh, I, uh, we really suggested uh, with regard to next step, um, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Anyway, so uh, we uh, develop a, um, a document with a, a strategic um, orientation for next year, and certainly we talk to have a really a better uh, and a more uh, a, a stronger regional platform. And um, I, I welcome really the work that you're doing here with regard to uh, regional surveillance. I think we move people with data and I think to have that more stronger surveillance regional uh, platform uh, will really help really uh, having uh, those uh, platform. Um, and when I talk about platform, I, there's one, I, I talk really within WHO and also with partners. Uh, one of the gap at the hub is that we were not that close with partners. Um, we corrected with uh, the workshop. Um, so this is one thing. The second is we have four projects uh, which are on the drawing uh, table. Uh, we talk about the, the workshop. I just want to acknowledge here we, we work with UNICEF for the workshop, MSF, IFRC, and WAHO, which is the West African uh, Health Organization. And uh, I think uh, having, through those projects, uh, having that collaboration can be very, very helpful. Um, two, three other projects. Currently, we have uh, epidemiologists in nine countries uh, to do the hotspot mapping. I'll name the, the nine countries because I think it's important. And I think we have to do that, um, that uh, harmonization uh, in priorities. So these countries are Benin, Cameroon, Burkina Faso, Chad, Ghana, Mali, Niger, 
Senegal, South Sudan. Vincent Sogino is coordinating that, and they're really improving. They're doing a great job, honestly, uh, in um, mapping and validating with the authority and with partners. And uh, currently, they are funded till end of June. But I, I so much wish if we could talk, you know, to, to carry on uh, their work. Um, I, I think WHO has a, an advantage with regard to data, and I, I think we, uh, of course, within a bigger structure, because I don't think cholera is a one partner or one WHO uh, issue. But uh, if we could take the work they're doing and carrying it further, that would be great. And I'm sure that uh, with a little bit of push, we could prolong those epidemiologists uh, in the request for funding we asked it for till April 2023, but I think it, it doesn't need much to, to sort of engage our senior management to, to, to bring them further on. Um, we established the regional stock, we established the minimal stock, uh, it's not completed, uh, we still need a little bit of funding to really have those 12 sort of kit to send to 12 events. That would be inspect unexpected because we have to be careful here, what we're Building in Accra is for, it's not replacing the responsibility of national authority to have their stock. Um, it's not replacing the national authority of Nigeria or DRC to manage their stock, but it's for countries, let's say, that are at risk but didn't expect a, an outbreak. Uh, currently, like, um, it's, it's to help those kind of countries. I'm working in Mauritania right now, and of course, Mauritania, which hasn't had cases for five years we won't have a minimal stuff of cholera, but it would be for a country like Maur Mauritania that would have an outbreak like that was totally unexpected. So at least we'll be able to help a country like that. It's also for countries that would have a, a much greater number that uh, is expected, um, or it would be for really preparing our country around a major outbreak. So um, we're working on that. And the last one is we have a, a, a project, a WASH project, uh, which we would like to pilot in two countries uh, around the water quality uh, monitoring and evaluation and monitoring. So uh, this is it, and build that capacity, which is a responsibility of WHO to, to monitor that uh, uh, water quality. So I think this is a bit over 10 minutes. So thank you so much uh, for listening. Thank you.